My next guest is Guy White, founder of Catalix, which is a business based here in Geneva, Switzerland. Guy comes from the UK originally. He's been running this business for about six and a half years after a very successful jump from his very safe and secure corporate job. And his goal was to do that before the age of 30, which he did. Let's have a listen to Guy because he's going to tell us all about how they use technology and other innovative techniques to help brands connect with their consumers and dig out the research and the insights which the, the brands can use to create amazing new innovations. Let's listen to Guy. This is the Expat Business Hero Podcast, and I'm your host, Alex Congdon. Hi there, Guy. Great to have you on the show. Hi there. Thank you very much for having me. <laughs> so, Guy, before we talk a bit about how you got here, I'd just love to have you introduce yourself. Just, yeah, a bit about your business. Tell us a bit about your business and who you help and how. Sure. So I run a company called Catalix. Uh, Catalix is a technology-enabled marketing consultancy um, that helps big companies, generally FMCG, but other consumer-facing companies, uncover insight, uh, co-create innovation and, uh, and, and improve ideas to help consumers and help build their brands. Um, our tagline is help build your brands beat uh, consumer expectations. So what does that mean, to beat a consumer expectation? Are you really helping people to create things they couldn't create before without your, without your insights? We'd like to think so. Um, and uh, I, I think the, the way we work is, or, or what we're trying to do is, is get the consumer into the company in better ways, faster, so that they, they can engage with the consumer either one-to-one or one-to-a-hundred or one-to-a-thousand um, over a day, a week, a month, even a year. Um, to, to bounce ideas off, to see how they live and what they do and how they interact with existing products and, and so they can build better stuff for consumers. So, so yeah, we'd we like to think we, we help companies really see through the eyes of the consumer. And you talked about technology before. So how is technology helping your business or letting you do things that perhaps you couldn't have done 10, 15 years ago? We wouldn't have been able to exist 10, 15 years ago, I don't think. Um, we're fully online. Uh, we're completely virtual. So we connect companies to consumers anywhere in the world in any language without traveling anywhere. So the whole idea of being able to talk to 100 people you know, asynchronously for, for a week um, 15 years ago, I, I just don't think it was, a, you know, it was even a concept, really. Uh, anything beyond a survey was, was kind of pretty new and an interesting or you know or a physical focus group so i think i think what we do is uh you know we're in that group of companies that that no one would have really you know completely didn't exist before before the internet and i mean just bring it to life a little bit give me an example of a typical kind of project that that a company will come to you with and say listen help us please we've got this problem yeah, sure. So there's lots of ways, jumping on and jumping off places. But let's imagine a company is trying to create a new product and the competition are doing lots of things and they're really interested and they're doing well. The company wants to obviously do something that's a bit new and a bit different. Um, so what they might do is come to us and, and ask us to then embed that consumer into, into their process. So we'd recruit into our online uh, platform, um, typically probably about 100 consumers um, of their target audience, whoever they wanted to talk to, and work with them over the course of, of anything from a matter of days to, to about a month to, first of all, uncover insight. So what is it that the consumers, who are they, how do they live, what are their kind of the needs that aren't being satisfied in that particular space? Um, you know, just, just try and learn about them, uh, their, their daily lives in the context of the category that we're talking about so we can start to understand what do they like and dislike about the products or services that exist out there? Just really kind of unpack everything out there. Then we look to kind of um, uh, converge back towards, you know, let's let's play back to the consumer what we think we've heard to see what resonates with them and what doesn't. So what can be a compelling way of uh, introducing this product? What could the packaging look like? What could the name be? What could the advertising and communication around that product look like and sound like and feel like? So we then, we then go and co-create with the company or with the creative agency what that might look like and then play that back to the consumer again um, for them to, to say if they think we're in the right direction or the wrong direction and, and kind of to validate and improve further. And then we go on and on like this in this kind of iterative journey 
um, ultimately the end of it will come a you know a concept or a, a product idea or a communication idea that the, the, the that's being kind of you know rubber stamped by the consumer and typically towards the end we'll we'll then recruit in you know more maybe 300 or so people and um, so we can get those kind of rubber stamp quantitative metrics as well um, so that kind of process takes about takes about a month but you can do bits and pieces of that so you might just want to check in on one particular element of a creative journey with with a consumer group um, as well um, so yeah hopefully that gives a, a brief idea of kind of what we do yeah. I mean, so how is that different then to perhaps agencies or market research agencies were, were doing this kind of work before, you know? So before it took ages and cost a lot um, is the starting point. And everything else sort of paused while you went into consumer work with the consumer. If you're, you're working with a creative agency to create a piece of communication, you'd, you'd go and do that and then you would, you would sort of stop and then the market researchers would, 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 would grab hold of it and, and go and check with the consumer if this was in the right direction or not. And that, that took a, you know, a month or so. And then, you know, if, if there wasn't the big green light and the big tick in the box, well, you kind of start again and, and off you go again. So it can take ages. Our approach is meant to be fully integrated into that creative journey. So it's, it's far quicker. Uh, it's much more transparent that every stakeholder can see what's going on at the same time. It's much more iterative. So if, if it's not quite right, then it's not about throwing the baby out of the bathwater. It's about iterating with the consumer. Say, oh, well, you know, you didn't, you, you like the idea, but you didn't like the red packaging. What happens if we made it green? Or, you know, like having that kind of discussion. So it's, it's not about, I think research traditionally was all about the tick in the box. And now it's all about just getting the consumer in the room. Ultimately, they're the people that can be using your product or your service. So, you know, having their right to reply is, we believe, quite, quite useful. You mentioned babies beforehand, and you just said you've had you've just had a baby very recently. So congratulations! Uh, yes. yes. <laughs> and and you know she's not keeping you awake too much at night. But one of the things that can keep a business owner awake at night, as you mentioned before, is is having a team of more than one because you've obviously got a, you know, you've got quite a team now. You've got over I think 10, 12 people, uh, perhaps yeah. and a bigger network beyond that. And what's that been like for you as a business owner running that kind of operation? Obviously, a lot of a lot of uh, moving pieces there. I mean, it's been. Going from, you know, starting off literally for the first year, you know, working out of my, my bedroom in Geneva to getting to where we are now has been, I mean, it's been a hell of a journey really to see the company grow and to try and grow the company. And we've made so many mistakes along the way and learned so much along the way. Um, you know, on the one hand, you know, it makes me incredibly proud to see this this group of you know, really exciting, motivated people that kind of, you know, share what, what I'm trying to do and, and want to be part of that. On the other hand, it's petrifying because I've got to pay their salaries every month. So, yeah, I mean, but, but that's what you've got to do to, to, grow the, to grow the business, I guess. And, um, you know, I, I guess when you're a group of people that's around this size, it's so interesting because, I, I mean, I used to work in a big, big company. So, you know, I've, I've done that side of things. And so to see the small company, everything is magnified. If, if someone does something great, it's, it's magnified and you can see it instantly. And that's fantastic because you can celebrate instantly. Vice versa is also true, of course. If, if I make a decision that's horrible or, or someone else does something that's not quite right, it, it, you know, you can see it really quickly, really instantly. Your, your clients are going to, going to tell you or not tell you and keep completely silent and the business stops coming in. You know, you can, you, so, so that's been, really interesting and and you, you know you have to be really honest because you can see exactly what works and what doesn't and building the right culture is so important um so that people work together because again if people stop working well together that gets magnified and has big ripple effects across the business when the machine starts working and hums along really nicely then then you can also everyone can feel that and gets really excited about that so it's a it's a pretty emotional journey i have to say in, in many ways so how did you end up in switzerland so you're from the uk i mean just to be clear you're from the uk just the, your accent yeah. gives it away just a little bit uh how did you end up in geneva then and, and why did you start the business what was the trigger so i i'm an ex-proctor and gamble person and uh, png obviously has a, a big emia headquarters in in geneva um i started in the uk straight out of uni and um and after about just shy of two years they um a job came up in geneva that was that was really interesting for me and and they they asked if I wanted to come across, and I came across um, back in 2006. So yeah, so I moved with PNG, 
And it's such a weird question about how I started and why I wanted to start. Like, I didn't have a light bulb moment. Um, it wasn't like, aha, this is a thing that needs to be done and I'm the right person to do it. Not, not at all. Um, I just had this want and sort of desire to run my own business forever. Like, I, I don't know when or why it started. I, I sort of dabbled little bits and pieces. I ran a sports tour business just after leaving university on the side. I've done a few things. I've written tons of like business plans, which just were half business plans that gathered dust on the shelf. And, and I just, I just, I said to myself, this is going to sound a bit weird, but I said to myself, I need to be out of big company life and try, just give this a go before I'm 30. And at 29 years and 11 months, I finally plucked up the courage and um, quit cold turkey. Didn't have an idea really, didn't know what I wanted to do, but thought, I've, you know, I've got to do this or it's going to just eat at me. And so did, and just spent about a year trying to work out what on earth I wanted to do and, and what on earth, you know, could work. And we've gone from there, but it's been, it's been really organic. It's sort of grown and evolved and, you know, we've tried stuff that haven't worked, we've tried stuff that has worked, we've kind of grabbed hold of the stuff that has worked and cut the stuff that hasn't and, and we continue to do so. Cause that's, that some people say that's a, you know, a huge risk. You know, you had a pretty good, great corporate career, blue chip company, jumping out into the abyss. No, any regrets? None at all. I, it's a crazy risk financially. Um, I heard someone once say this. Uh, they said entrepreneurs see risk in the same way that everyone else see risk, but the definition of risk is different. So for most people, and, uh, you know, I believe, for most people, the risk of kind of you know, security and safety and financial is, is really, really important. And, and that's what, you, you know, if you... As I said, P&G is a, a great employer and, and very well respected. So to kind of throw that all away, some people would say I was completely mad. But then on the flip side, to have not thrown that away and not had the taken, you know, had the freedom and the exploration and the passion to do something that I really believed in, I think that you know that's a risk, right? By staying in a big company that that doesn't quite align to who you want to be, that's a huge risk. Um, and so I think, I think that's why, I think that's a risk that people that start businesses perhaps feel a bit more acutely than the numbers going into their bank account. Now I have to say, I'm, I, at the time I was single and didn't really have any commitments. So kind of had a bit more freedom to, you know, to, to make that decision as well. And to make the mistakes early on. And to make the mistakes and yeah. exactly and to work all hours and all of that kind of stuff. So talking about mistakes or perhaps challenges or difficulties, what, what sort of difficulties you've, did you face on the way as you were setting up the business? Oh, so many. Um, I, I guess, first of all, because it was, it was, I didn't have like a big aha light bulb, you know, this is what I'm going to do and this is how I, I couldn't articulate what I, what I wanted to do for ages. So like, I used to go into client meetings and explain what we did and, and, everyone myself included didn't really know what I was talking about um, so uh, I, I think we just got very lucky that uh, uh, you know a few a few people kind of just accepted that this sounded like something that could work and and, and took a risk with us and, and you know those were our first few clients that got us off the ground so yeah being able to actually articulate that elevator pitch I didn't have an elevator pitch for, for a long time I probably still don't uh, so that was one. Um, I'm quite good at chasing after the new shiny thing, and that's really dangerous. So my team now, I have a team, you know, are very good at, at telling me to stop it and and to focus on kind of the core thing. So we've tried stuff and and commercialized stuff um, like really quickly, just because it's it's exciting, and then you know, and then had to kind of backpedal and and retract, and I guess you know, find the balance between trying the new innovative exciting thing and uh you know just sticking and doing what we're good at really really well so yeah i think that was another thing that's maybe cost us is is running after too many things in too many directions hiring um god i've made some hiring mistakes as well um not i hasten to add with the current team who who are absolutely fantastic but along the way we've um we've brought on board a, a few people that probably weren't the right people and maybe hold on to them for a little bit too long. 
um, as well, because um, I'd never had to deal with that beforehand as well. So that was all a big learning curve as well. Yeah, they're probably the biggest three that come to yeah. mind. You mentioned also to me before that, that it, obviously selling was a big new experience for you. I mean, yeah, true. the idea of selling yourself, you know, selling services. How did you find that? Horrible, actually. I'm not, <laughs> an actual, I'm not a natural salesman. And just the idea of pitching, especially when I wasn't fully confident in what I was pitching about, was, was brutal. But I guess you just you stuck it up. Like, if you're not going to do it, if you're not going to pick up the phone, if you're not going to face rejection, then you're not going to have a business, right? Ultimately, you know, there's going to be a part of any business that you're uncomfortable with probably multiple parts and for me at the start it was it was selling it was picking up the phone and reaching out to people and knowing what to do as well when when no one responded and you know if someone didn't respond to an email was it because they didn't want to talk to you was it because they were busy or was it because they had no idea what you're talking about and you know what was the right etiquette should you call them should you call them once a day what what should you do i had no idea i had no idea what i was doing so that was really tough I've never had any kind of sales training. You just sort of do it, I guess, and you kind of learn stuff works and some stuff doesn't and you all the stuff works and you refine talk to like what you're saying and, 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 and buy you. I think the other thing that I that really helped me was, I think especially, I don't know if it's just a British thing, but I think this idea of selling is seen as, as bad. You, know, you shouldn't sell people, you know, the, the kind of, you know, door to door, you know. I think what got me over it was, you know, if, if people are going to buy what, what I've got at me really well and they really like what they've been given, then I'm, I'm not actually selling. I'm not selling, you know, double glazing or hooves. I'm, 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 I'm solving a need that they've got. I think that helped me. And uh, I think when you're, when you're selling services, that's, that's ultimately what you're doing. And as long as, as long as you deliver and they say, get yeah, what you guys have done and we really like, and thank you. And, and hopefully, you know, want to buy us again, then, then you're not, it's not, it's not an evil thing, is it? It's just, by the world um i think that's what we try and do right like so yeah i think that's kind of how i got over that when i made that realization um you know and frankly also people will say no if they don't want it so if they're not saying no it might be they're just busy and if they really don't want you they'll just say sorry not for us and you move on yes yeah, so someone once said to me you know you're you're being selfish if you're not getting your value out there so you know look at it the other way around it's your duty to go out and evangelize and tell the world because otherwise you're keeping it in and that's not fair so uh so well done <laughs> I'll, I'll steal that if i may <laughs> yeah absolutely um, <laughs> that little team to stop being so selfish they need to get it out <laughs> so tell me i mean you know doing this is it hasn't been easy um obviously a lot of challenges on the way learn a lot what, what kind of support did you get along the way either inspiration or practical support from others so i think the first thing i learned leaving big company um, was just how amazingly generous and helpful kind of everyone is. It, there's very few people out there that won't give you a small amount of their time uh, if you ask for it or even if you don't. Um, so actually, you know, through the, the sort of six and a half years or so that we've been doing this now, there's just too many people who have offered advice or support or an introduction or lent forward and said, well, look, let's do something small together. Um, and just, it feels like most people, you know, they, they want you to, they want you to succeed. They want to see you succeed. And, and that's just, that's really, I mean, it's overwhelming in many respects to see that. And, and so actually there's support all over the place from everyone um, from, you know, from very small to, to much, to much bigger in terms of broader inspiration. Uh, I think there's, you know, there's a lot of books out there um, that can support um, entrepreneurs. There's books like, you know, The Hard Things About Hard Things. There's From Zero to One, the Peter Thiel books. There's even things like the Four Hour Work Week and Practical Guides, um, which are, you know, dubious in some of their, their recommendations. But, the, the, you know, I think if you, you can pick and choose from all sorts of practical guides and support and help. Um, I went to, when I was first starting out, the EPFL Venture Lab as well, um, which is a completely free thing run by EPFL for in Lausanne, entrepreneurs. Yeah. You have to apply and they, in Lausanne, yeah, exactly. There's, it's classroom based and it's principally for kind of EPFL students who 
maybe have created a great product as part of their studies and are looking to commercialize it, but, but they do, uh, you know, anyone can apply. So there's courses like that that are out there. Uh, that's a fantastic thing because at the end of it, you have to, you have to pitch in front of your, your class. So that was the first time I really stood up in front of you know, 40 people and said, this is what we do. So, you know, safe space for people to tell you what, what they think about you and, uh, and what you're saying and give you feedback and advice. So, so I would definitely advise anyone that's, that's kind of exploring, that, you know, starting up to, to look at things like that as well. I forget what they're called, but there's the blue box. Um, there's an incubator up in Planley Watt, which I forget the name of, that's also um, Geneva's equivalent. Um, it's kind of a startup space as well. I mean, would you have done yeah, anything lots, differently? Lots of, would you have done anything differently regarding the, the help that you got over the years, or how you dealt with certain problems? Do you think? Are you happy with the route you took? It's a good question. I mean, there's already so many things you could have done differently. I probably would have reached out to more people sooner. I think. I think I'd have probably been a bit more honest. So I think at the start, you're a bit nervous that everyone's going to tell you you're an idiot. Um, so you sort of hide, well, I certainly did. I, I hid behind that and was like, ta-da, this is what we were doing. I think I, think I would have taken more of a approach, you know, a, so what we're thinking about doing and can you help and what works and what doesn't and done some consumer research of my own, um, frankly. <laughs> um, you know, I kind of did that through, you know, pitching and watching how people responded and pretending that I had the final sort of product, as it were, when it was probably still quite a work in progress and um, so I think maybe you know sitting down and saying to people this is what we're thinking about doing and you know is it interesting for you and what is and what isn't interesting and how to improve so I think that that would have probably been a, a big thing I, I would have done earlier um, and now we do that much more and and actually you know our, our clients and prospects are really you know they're really forthcoming with that you know there's a lot of people that say well we want to try the new thing and we're very happy if it's a bit rough around the edges because it wouldn't be new if it wasn't kind of thing. So, um, so actually um, now we're, we're taking that approach. We find a lot of traction there. I mean, does anything jump out at you as um, that you're really proud of that, you know, in this six and a half years that you've achieved either personally for yourself or for the business or for your clients, is anything that jumps out? So for the business, um, we, we won the Market Research Society new agency of the year in 2014. That was huge. That, that was amazing and then in 2016 we got their market research society insight management award for a big big piece of work we've done with the red cross again hugely proud uh, on behalf of the team um for, for those um so i think those awards were were fabulous and and just a really nice kind of proof that what we were doing was being picked up and listened to and recognized by the industry. Um, so that was really, um, really compelling. I love it whenever you hear from a client that says, oh, that piece of work has really helped us do X or launch Y or, you know, have this, you know, make our advert really successful. And we've, we've got a few stories like that that I, I really like. Um, we were at an offsite last week um, in England and, um, and just actually sat there at the offsite and looking at the team and being like, wow, you know, there's quite a few of us now and, everyone's getting on really well and you know these people are delivering really great work and you know really that that's that makes me feel enormously proud i have to say as well um from a business business perspective i have to say yeah so you, you hit the target of starting the business before you were 30 you made it by one month by one month so yeah. <laughs> looking ahead to other bigger goals then for the business or for yourself uh, what, what do you think the future holds in store for you so i think for the business I mean, we're looking to scale right now. Um, you know, we're moving from kind of being project focused to product focus um, um, so that we can scale, which is a, it's an enormous challenge because what we don't want to lose is that, um, uh, that client connection. We don't just want to be an off the shelf product. So working out how to deal with that and then being able to, to scale that appropriately um, will be is, is in the near time over the next kind of 6, 12, 18 months, what we're really, really focusing on. Um, at the same time, I'm now married. And as you said, I've just uh, last month had my first daughter. So um, I'd love to find a way of spending some more time with my, um, with my family um, from a personal point of view as well. So, so trying to find that balance a little bit more from the, than I've had for over the last uh, 
six or so years is uh, is probably another really big big point for me on a personal side. Yeah, well, good luck with that. Yeah, thank, you. thank you very much. It's, it's tricky, I know. Um, so, but good luck with that. Um, so, just to just to close up, I mean, I ask this question to a lot of people at the end of the, these interviews, and it's around mentorship. And if you had to choose someone or a group of people to mentor or to help, who would that be, and and why? What for me to be the mentor, yeah. or someone to be able to for, for me to be the mentor? Yeah. Um, I mean, anyone that's trying to do to set something up on their own whatever that might be um i'm always very happy to to support in any way i can you know if it's just doing explaining what what i did and maybe hearing their questions and hearing you know a bit their business idea and their pitch being a safe space for people to to try things out and have a chat and all of that kind of stuff i i, I find that you know very rewarding and would be very happy to do that um I've been there at the start, so I know what it feels like. Um, um, and uh, and yeah, so any anyone that's um, that's looking to take the leap, anyone that's been or been or is still at a you know in a big safe corporate job and wants to take that jump, um, or anyone that already has and is just looking for someone to talk to, I'm very very happy to do that. Fantastic. Okay, well, listen, Guy, I, I was going to finish up by just saying how people can get in touch with you. So you gave me your website address, which is um, www.thecatholics.com, and that's spelled the, T-H-E-C-A-T-A-L-Y-X.com. And I'll put it on the show notes afterwards so everyone can see, uh, see that and they can reach out to you from that. But listen, Guy, I just want to say thank you so much for coming on. Real pleasure. Thank you so no, much for what you do. Thank you so much. Appreciate. Thanks for on behalf of all your clients that you help, and um, you know, keep us up to date with what happens, and maybe we'll talk again in the future. Fabulous. Thank you so much.